our third and probably our most complicated and hardest measure of dispersion to calculate, the sample standard deviation. And this is the most commonly used measure of dispersion or variability that we see when we use ungrouped interval ratio variables. And what really what the standard deviation is, is it really tells us if your score is not the average, if your score is not the mean, how far on average do you differ from that average score? The bigger the standard deviation, the more the scores are spread out from the mean. So here we see our red and our purple lines that we saw from one of the first few slides. Low standard deviation, a thin curve, means that most of your scores are right in between the middle, are, right, are hovering right around the average. Whereas a fat, wide curve, flatter curve, means that you have more variability, a high standard deviation, that a lot of the scores differ widely from the mean. So the variance and the standard deviation are really more precise measures of variation compared to the range and the interquartile range. And the reason is, is that the variance and the standard deviation take every single score into account. Notice when we talked about interquartile range and range, we were really only looking at two different numbers, right? The highest and the lowest score when we calculate the range, and the 75th and the 25th percentile, or Q3 and Q1 scores, for the interquartile range. But when we're calculating the variance and the standard deviation, we take into account every single score. And you'll be thinking, why am I now all a sudden talking about variance when we're talking about standard deviation? Well, really, the variance is just one step before calculating the standard deviation. So when you calculate the standard deviation, you're essentially calculating the variance. We'll talk about variance later on towards the second half of the semester when we start talking about hypothesis testing. So here's the equation. Don't freak out. We're going to walk through it nice and slowly so you understand exactly what each of these symbols mean. Okay, so the steps for calculating the sample standard deviation. Step one, calculate the mean. And this x with the bar on top also known as x-bar, is also another way that we call and we notate the mean. So once you calculated the mean, the next step is to subtract the mean from each score. So if you have five different scores, you take the mean and you subtract it from each of those five scores. Once you subtracted those, you then are going to have a difference. And what you end up doing is squaring each of those differences. Once you squared all of those differences, we add them up. And that's what this little E looking thing is. It's also known as sigma. And this is where you're going to need to use the little symbol button online when you're entering any answers online to notate this when you're showing your work. So after we've squared differences, we add up all of those squared differences. Almost there. Next step, we're now moving down to the denominator. We divide their sample size minus 1. At this point, the numerator and the denominator, you've calculated the variance. The last step is simply taking the square root. Take the square root of the entire thing, which is your variance, and you've got the sample standard deviation. So let's work through it. Here's the equation. Here are four different scores. Go ahead and work through your six steps of calculating the standard deviation. Go ahead and pause this video, work through it, come back when you've got your answer. All right, let's see what you got. The mean is 4. How do we do that? Well, we add 2 plus 4 plus 4 plus 6. Divide that by 4 gives us 4. Next step, we take each score and we subtract the mean from each of them. So we take 2 minus 4, 4 minus 4, 4 minus 4, 6 minus 4, and we get the difference, negative 2, 0, 0, 2. The next step is to then square each of those differences. So negative 2 squared gives us 4, 0 squared gives us 0, 0 squared gives us 0, and 2 squared gives us 4. Next step, add up 
all of the squared differences. 4 plus 0 plus 0 plus 4 gives us 8. This is now the numerator. Now we go down to the denominator. And minus 1 is 4. Minus 1, we have 4 scores. So 8 divided by 4 minus 1 equals 2.68. This is the variance. The last step is simply take the square root of your variance, and there's your standard deviation, 1.6. Our final answer, decimal point to the right because we're given whole numbers. Notice when we got to the variance, I took it out to the hundreds place, two decimal places to the right, because I know that my final answer needs to be to the tenths place, one decimal place to the right, so I need to make sure that all of my work before then, I bring it out at least one or two decimal places further so I really know what that final number should be. Okay, and our last measure of dispersion, coefficient of variation. This tells us how big the standard deviation is relative to the mean. This is the equation. Coefficient of variation equals 100 times the standard deviation divided by the mean. And because we multiply by 100 in the numerator, it's expressed as a percentage. So whenever we calculate CV, we should always express it as a percentage. So one thing we can think about this is that coefficient of variation that is equal to 100 means the standard deviation is the exact same size as the mean. Because if we have standard deviation, over x bar, 1 over 1 equals 100, then that means they're the exact same thing. So if the mean is 50 and the standard deviation is 50, that's a really, really big difference. That's huge variability, right? Standard deviation of 50. But one thing that we kind of have trouble doing up to this point is being able to compare multiple groups, multiple data sets, and say, which group has more or less variability. Higher the number, higher variability. So here's an example. Let's say we have a group of people. We have height and we have weight. But these groups of people are different groups of people. We have weight for some group of people and then height for another group of people. We want to know which one has more variability. Is there more variability in weight or is there more variability in height? Well, we see that we have an average of 170 pounds with a standard deviation of 10 pounds. We also have their height, which is 70 inches, standard deviation of 5 inches. So just looking at these two variables, height and weight, can you guess which of these two has more variability? Well, we have the mean and we have the standard deviation which of these two measures is a measure of dispersion? Hopefully it says standard deviation. So if we say that the bigger the standard deviation, the more variability, at this point, we're led to believe that weight has more variability than height. Well, let's see. Remember, coefficient of variation allows us to compare multiple variables and different data sets between each other relative to the mean. So as of now, we're estimating and guessing that weight has more variability than height simply on the premise that standard deviation is bigger for weight compared to height. But let's calculate the coefficient of variation for each of these variables. Go ahead and calculate them, pause the video, see if you can calculate it. All right, so what did you get for your coefficient of variation for weight and height? Well, weight, 100 times standard deviation of 10, divided by the mean, which is 170, gives us 5.89%. The coefficient of variation for height is 7.14%. So which variable has more variability? Height. Height has more variability because it's a bigger coefficient of variation. But you wouldn't have known that, and obviously we didn't come up with that assumption prior to calculating this, right? We just looked at the standard deviation for weight and height and assumed that weight had more variability because standard deviation was bigger. 
but relative to the means, we see in fact that height has more variability within that data set than weight does within that, own, within that data set. So don't assume just from looking at standard deviation that you know how much variability and how much dispersion there is in a, in a given data set. If we're comparing different variables, different data sets, we need to use the coefficient of variation in order for us to come to a definitive conclusion as far as comparisons. But really, in all honesty, we really don't see the use of the coefficient of variation too broadly. With some of the big advantages, and I've kind of alluded to this in the previous slide, is that we can really see how big the standard deviation is compared to typical scores for that variable. And you can compare the coefficient of variation for one variable to the coefficient of variation for another variable to determine which one has more dispersion in it. So in summary, Measures of dispersion allow one to determine how much variability there is in a participant's answers and within a given variable and data set. And the four measures of dispersion or variability that we covered and that we're going to calculate are the range, interquartile range, sample standard deviation, and the coefficient of variation. And really the coefficient of variation or CV is the only measure of dispersion where we can really compare one variable to another. The range is the most crude and is the least reliable measure of variability because really, again, when we have outliers like Bill Chamberlain, it's really, really sensitive to outliers.